ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu jami'an Today I like to talk about benign and neglect in the Salafi community related to social economical racial medical issues in the community in the US and the reason why I want to talk about this particular topic today because I've been part of the Salafi community for over 20 years or upon Salafi Dawa for about 20 years and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me to be able to go away to study Islam for a few years and travel and to live amongst the Muslims in the Muslim world. So today I want to talk about the topic of benign neglect in the Salafi community in the U.S. pertaining to race issues, social issues, economical issues, that the people in the community face every day. And that also includes mental health issues. For the last five years, I have been working also closely with uh, mental disability, Muslim disability awareness from the UK. And I also have been an imam for about five years in New York and some other places in the U.S., another place in the U.S. in South Carolina. And on top of that, I have been maybe 10 years as a local khatib in the area where I live and giving kukba and juma. So I've been dealing with the Muslim community for a long time in general. And the Salafi community, I have been with them since early 2000. And I have went to study Islam maybe in the early 2000, 2005 or 2006. So there is an elephant in the room in the Salafi community. In particular with the Du'at and Tulabu Aum. And this is a benign neglect pertaining to racial and social issues that do not talk or deal with. So first we have to understand what is benign neglect? What is the definition of the word? Benign neglect, it means an attitude or political or attitude or a policy of ignoring an often dedicated or undesirable situation that one is held to be responsible for dealing with it. So benign neglect is denying and shirking the responsibility that the person who's in the head of the community, they're denying it. This is where I'm using it today. For any other meanings or uh, medium is being used, is meaning shirking one responsibility but altogether not even acknowledging it so in the salafi community within the u.s today there is a benign neglect related to social issues that you see from mass of their du'at in tulabu Aum. me as a muslim i'm gonna give people the benefit of the doubt and the benefit of the doubt I would give them, those who are in, in positions of responsibility in the Muslim community, in particular here the Salafi community, is that I could say, giving them an excuse or benefit of the doubt, is that maybe they wasn't trained to deal with social issues. Maybe they wasn't trained to deal with uh, race issues. Maybe they wasn't trained to deal with economic issues. Maybe they wasn't trained to deal with medical health service or awareness. Maybe they weren't trained to do this. So this is me, Abu Bara, Muhammad Amriki, giving them the benefit of the doubt. But we have to recognize that 
the benign neglect, it is there. It exists in the community. And when some people are the du'at and the imams in the Salafi community, when race issues are brought up to them, they, they don't even want to talk about it. And they don't even want to deal with it. And when people in the community deal with it or try to handle it, for example, if it's a race issue, they turn around and say, well, you are a nationalist. We've seen with the George Floyd situation from the Muslim community, the African-American Muslim community, in particular the Salafi community, when people wanted to participate in their civil rights in the U.S. to protest against the killing of George Floyd, we've seen many of the African-American du'at in the Salafi community show their neglect, benign neglect. There's no protesting in Islam. BLM is a LBGQT organization. We don't participate in these things. But you notice the benign neglect, they didn't talk about the racial issue that blacks are facing in America. And for a particular, the Salafi community, the mass majority of its members in the community, they are African American Muslims from Philadelphia, from New York, from Georgia, from New Jersey, from Cali. The mass majority of the followers in the Salafi community are African American Muslims who live in the U.S. society, who are born and raised American citizens, who many of us have been citizens for the, in this country for generations, generations. And our family members, our great-grandparents and our mothers and fathers, they fought in America for civil rights for black peoples. So when the issue of George Floyd came up from the Salafi community, who before the incident of George Floyd being killed, you are here, none of them talk about the issues that go on in the African-American Muslim community or the African-American community where many of the misajids are at. You don't hear them talk about the black social issues and economical issues that many of the black African-American Muslims face from mass incarceration, from drug use, from family problems from mental health from economical and social issues that are faced with blacks in their community and they will say well these issues are not race issues but in reality because of systemic racism in america it put blacks in america under a certain type of scrutiny if you're black you are Amer African American, American, uh, African American Muslim or African American. You got a ball and chain on your foot, even if you can't see it. And that ball and chain that's on your foot, it prevents you from doing certain things, and it locks you down in certain situations. And most of those situations that it locks you down in, they are economical issues and social issues. Race related issues pertaining to your skin color. You have an imam in the African American Salafi community will talk about well, you have a lot of black African American Muslims that they're not able to keep their marriage because the husband can't find a job or keep a job. That has to do with mass incarceration, that has to do with having a felony, that has to do with um, not having access to certain type of wealth. And not having access to certain type of trades and skills that's going to give them the job or the skills for them to have an income. So the benign neglect that we have in the African American Salafi community or the Salafi community as a whole is that many of the du'at and tulab al don't want to address these issues. They just ignore them altogether. 
and but when we look at the practitioners in their community all of them are facing all the issues of every African American Muslim is facing. Can't keep a job, can't find a job, no income. <clears throat> Not uh, academically challenged or no degree. The husband and wife are in a house fighting marital discord because they're fighting over for, um uh, they're fighting over finances, or they're fighting over social ills that either the husband or the wife has. Cheating, lying, deceitful, not being obedient. In a lot of the cases, this has to do a lot with systemic racism and the trauma of slavery. Benign neglect. So the du'at or the tulabu am, they don't want to talk about race issues in America. They don't want to talk about systemic racism in America. Why? Benign neglect. They don't see that race is the issue. So they keep on preaching them. They keep on brows beating them with Quran. Brow beating them with Hadith. Brow beating them with Fatawa. Brow beating with Kalamu Ulima, the statements of scholars overseas, and then they start noticing none of these things are being effective inside their community. They keep on asking the Sheikh overseas the same question over and over and over about divorce and kula. Benign neglect. They don't want to recognize it's our social issues related to systemic racism is the reason why we in a situation that we are in when it comes to our marriages. So they keep on asking the sheikh the same questions about khula, the same questions about talaq. And the sheikh's wondering why people from America, when I, every time I come and I travel or I talk to you guys, is always the same question about marriage and divorce. Benign neglect. Don't want to recognize that systemic racism unpack your marriage and your finances and your thinking and your behavior. So they are browbeating the people in the community over and over and over with the same ayat, the same hadith, the same fatawa, the same kalam from the sheikh. And in noticing is not solving the people's problem. Rather yet the problems are a revolving door. Why? Because people are not addressing the origin of the problem. It's a race issue. It's a, it's a social economic issue. It's trauma. It's PTSD. It's all these things. So to include, I give you a great example that I have from my experience. When somebody asks a sheikh, with Sheikh Salim Tawil, Hafidhu Allah from Kuwait, he came to Masjid Akhru Quran wa Sunnah, maybe in 2008 or 2009, or 2009 or 2010, somewhere between that, either between 2010 or 2009 to 2012, sometime he came to Aqua Quran was Sunnah in Queens, New York, Jamaica, Queens, New York, off of the Van Wick Expressway. And one of the brothers asked him this question, and I will never forget it. The question was asked of the Sheikh that many of the peoples in the community, in the community, wondering why they can't have access to money. <laughs> they don't have money in the community. And let me describe Masjid Akhul Quran was Sunnah at that particular time. That Masjid community, the, the Masjid is in a, in a uh, predominantly Guyanese Caribbean community, meaning that majority of the brothers in the community are Guyanese Indian. And because the African American Salafis in Queens, New York, don't have really a Salafi masjid in that area. So the African American Salafi brothers like myself at that time, we visit that community. 
So somebody asked to shake that question. And I could assume it is an African-American Muslim because the Guyanese Indian Muslims, they have money. And they work together as a race of peoples. So many of them own business and that's their whole community. And many of them are related and they are business and they are business partners and their family members. So I know the question came from a black brother who asked the sheikh, a lot of us, we don't have access to money. What can we do about it? And the sheikh not being from America and he might not know too much of American history or African American Pacific his history. He gave them a good. He gave them an answer, but to me, it wasn't a good answer. He said that maybe Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala don't give you wealth and money because if you have wealth and money, that it will what misguide you. I wasn't happy with that answer because if I go to Kuwait, where the Sheikh is from, many of them have money. Many of them have wealth. Many, uh, many of them have wealth. And when we look at Kuwait, Dubai, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. They have money and wealth. And they may even make treaties with the disbelievers in business transaction so they can have more money and more wealth. But they have Islam. So when that answer was given to him, I wasn't happy with that answer. And many African-American Muslims, especially the Southern community, they accept that answer and run with it. Oh, the reason why Allah doesn't give us black people as Muslims money and wealth because we don't have masjids, especially here in New York area. Our Salafi masters, I don't see that many African-American Salafi masters that's being successful in New York. So many of us would take that answer and run with it. Oh, the reason why Allah is not giving us money is because if we have money, we're going to do haram with it or it's going to misguide us. That is not the correct answer for that situation. And that's not the solution for the African-American Muslim. So when it comes to the social issues of the African-American Muslim in the Salafi community, their du'at and student, students of knowledge, there is a benign neglect. Some of the du'ats in Tulabu Al and Salafi practitioners, they feel that if you indulge in race issues for black peoples in America, that you are a black nationalist. That's not what a nationalist in Islam. That, I mean, that's not what a nationalist, according to Islam, say. That's not a nationalist. That is not a nationalist. If I support in civil liberty or civil movements or, or, or issues pertaining to my peoples to benefit them in wealth, money, home, living conditions, marriage, how that is nationalism. Do you think in the Arab countries they don't have a social service? You don't think that they take care of their weak? You don't think they don't take care of their oppressed? You don't think they financially don't support their peoples? And the governments don't have programs to support their peoples in their countries? Have anybody seen the Dastor, the constitution for Saudi Arabia? Go read the constitution for Saudi Arabia. They said they follow Kitab and Sunnah. But it's an Arab state. It is an Arab state that's following Sharia law. Quran and Sunnah. Go read the Dastor, the constitution for Saudi Arabia. So if you're talking about I'm or a person or a black African American Muslim. Talking about social issues for black people. To get them out the conditions they are in. And you're going to say you're a black nationalist. Then you are a complete fool. You don't know what nationalism is in Islam. Islamic definition of what is nationalism. The Islamic definition of nationalism is. <clears throat> Arabs are better than. I mean Arabs are better than all non-Arabs. The Arab disbeliever is better than the Muslim. Who's not Arab. That's Arab nationalism. That's nationalism. If I say black people are the best people on the, on the world or the best Muslims in the world and anybody who's not black African, they're not a real Muslim. Or the black African is my brother before the Arab or Asian is my brother. 
If you don't hear that content, then that person is not a nationalist. So you don't know what a nationalist means. And unfortunately, many of the du'ats in the Salafi community in America, they think that is nationalism or black nationalism. If I tell the Muslim, hey man, the people who live in our community, they're suffering. There's people selling drugs in the streets. There's shootings and robberies going on. There's drug dealing going on. Let's help the black people in the community, whether they Muslim or not Muslim, so we all could be safe. If I say that, or oh, it said you a black nationalist, but did not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fight the Arabs who were disbelievers? And from fighting some of the Arabs who were disbelievers, did they not make treaties with them? What is the Treaty of Hudaybiyah? The, the Prophet ﷺ didn't make a treaty with the people of the Mushrikina from Quraysh. The, the Prophet ﷺ didn't make the treaty with the, with the Yahud from Yathrib, from Medina, who were Arab. Did he not make a treaty with them when he made Hijrah to Medina and said to the Yahud, the Jew, that whoever is the enemy of the Jew is the enemy of the Muslim. Did he not make a treaty with them? Is that Arab nationalism? Is that Arab nationalism? That's Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who were caught an Arab. And he made treaties with other Arabs who are not Muslims. Did not the Muslims, Arab, enter into Egypt? And when they entered to Egypt, or oh, listen to a program yesterday in Arabic, in Egypt, when Baba, the, 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 uh, the Catholic priest, the priest, the Coptic priest in Egypt, who was saying on a, a channel from Sufi you, some Sufi peoples, how Islam entered into Egypt. He said that when Islam entered into Egypt, the condition of the Egyptian people before the Muslim came is that they were oppressed. They were oppressed by the Romans. So they made a treaty with the Arab Muslims because they liked it them. They were just peoples. So when they went and fought the Romans, that the people of Egypt were with the Muslims. So since when Muslims, we don't care about oppressed peoples. And this is the problem of many du'at in America, in the African-American Salafi community. You think that if you stand for oppression or talk about white supremacy, or you talk about systemic racism, you are become, you will become a nationalist. Do you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you fear man? Do you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you fear what people will say about you in your cliques? In your cliques. Are you an agent for good or you are an agent for evil? Because benign neglect is also seeing a problem and not saying nothing or doing nothing about it. What the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see something wrong, what? Men yara munkaran. Whoever see al munkar, huh? You gairu bi yaddihi kama qala Rasulullah. You're not able to do so, right? You gairu bi yadd. You change it with your hands. And if you cannot change it with your hands, you hate it in your heart. And another narration said that is the weakest of Iman. Benign neglect. When you have benign neglect, even the way you interpret Islam is wrong. When you don't want to be steadfast, it's wrong. So you think if you see or talk about systemic racism and white supremacy that the people in your community are affected with who are victims of, and you don't want to talk about the topic, or you want to ignore it, then you are part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. And I'm going to give you an example. Recently, what happened in Germantown, in Philadelphia, close by Mashashuna Nabawiya, in Philadelphia, there have been a lot of shootings. In Philly, in Philly, in Germantown, a lot of shootings. And there's a video when the imam in Germantown, he's assisting somebody who was shot. But he's the same imam who's the problem in Philly who don't want to go out there and fix the problems in the streets in Philadelphia. But now in neglect, he's, now he's waiting because he didn't go and fix the problem in Philadelphia because of benign neglect. Now the problem is at their doorsteps. And that's when it's too late. Benign neglect. The same one, the same people who don't want to deal with the social issues. 
The same people who don't want to deal with the discrimination. The same people who don't want to deal with racism and white supremacy. Now it's at your doorstep. All the reality of it is at your doorstep. Black on black crime is a direct result of systemic racism. Blacks have no access to money. They have no access to economics. They have no assets. The whites have all the assets and lock them out. So now it's black on black crime because black people are competing with each other for the little dirt finances that they have, even if it's drug money. And that's why you, Hassan Somali, saying in your two hour lecture why some of the Muslims in the Salafi Masha are hanging out with the drug dealers. Or hanging out with the peoples in the crime. Or hanging out in part of their groups and cliques. Because you have benign neglect. And you don't want to address the social economical issues of the black community where you live. That's why the brothers in the community are still with the gangsters. That's why the brothers in the community are still selling drugs. That's why the brothers in your community are still out there with those peoples. Why? They are with their people because they don't have no access to real wealth. White man ain't doing that in Philadelphia. The white man in Philadelphia have access to wealth and money. That's why in, in Philadelphia, New York, across the U.S., that the majority of people inside prison are blacks. You look in New York, the majority of people in prison are blacks. But New Yorkers, in New York, black people don't even make up 50% of New York population. But we the majorities in the prison across the states. And we're not even the majority in most of the states that we are in. But we are the majority in the, in, in, in the prison. That is systemic racism. That is a result of systemic racism. Nixon war on drugs. Crime bill of Joe Biden. That is a direct result of systemic racism. If you don't deal with those issues and talk about those issues, what's going to happen? It's never going to be solved. Because you're noticing, you guys are getting all the fatawa from all the sheikh. It's still not fixing the problems in your community. You're browbeating everybody in the community with the same hadith, the same ayat, but the same problems are happening over and over and over and over again and over and again. You keep on asking this shake the same questions over and over and over again because you're not dealing with the direct problem or the origin of the problem and it's systemic racism. And then you don't care. And this goes for Philadelphia from Germantown, Mashid, Hassan, Somali. You don't care about the people in your community until the, until the bullets come flying by where you guys are at. Then you start caring and that's when it's too late. You should have been caring a long time ago. And that's why we have in many of the African-American communities, especially in the Salafi communities, we have many of them in the ghettos and not changing them. Many of them in the ghettos. I go to Campton, Campton Masjid in New Jersey, ghetto. Masjid Rahma, Newark, ghetto. Germantown Masjid, ghetto. The other Salafi communities inside Philly, there's affiliated with German town master in the ghettos. And no one's fixing the problems because we're the problems. Because the benign neglect, you have all the du'at and tulaba'om. Many of them, not all of them, they don't want to talk about the issue. They don't want to address the issue. Either or, they don't know how, they don't know how, or benign neglect. How many years? How how many years now we're gonna keep on brow and beating the people with the same thing? Then you're gonna notice, man, you're getting the same results. Oh, Hassan Somali. Why the brothers are hanging out with the people on the streets who are selling drugs? Why the brothers are hanging out with the peoples in the gangs? That's how they're getting their money to eat. That's why. That's how they're getting their money to eat. That's how. Just like. <laughs> Um, Hassan Somali from your two hour lecture when you heard the sister say she don't want to bring her daughter or her child to the daycare because the shooting in the street. Now you want to do something because you see your business is being threatened by people don't feel safe walking in the street. 
meaning that you originally wasn't caring about the peoples, Muslim or non-Muslim, who live in that community. You don't care about them. You only care now. You want brothers to be security guards and pay for them to get their gun license because you heard a sister is don't want to bring her daughter to your daycare, meaning making money, your business, the master's business. So now the masters are the places of making money. So you want to make sure your customers feel safe coming to your masjid with their children so you could get paid. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't care about, y'all guys don't care about the peoples where y'all live, man. Because of the benign neglect. You don't care about the Muslims. You don't care about the black Muslims, African American Muslims, the African Americans who are not Muslim, the people who live around. You don't feel, you don't care about them. You just care about your pockets. And many of the African American Muslims are taking this type of uh, uh, way in dealing with issues in the black community. They don't want to acknowledge where the origin of the issues are. Many of them, they're not equipped. Many of the duats, they don't, they don't even want to talk about it. And when they talk about it, they talk about it from the wrong point of view. I recently watched a brother who has qualifications, Islamically, graduate from Islamic University. Who live in the inner city or work within the inner city, and some blacks why, talking about uh, why the husband and wife having financial issues. He's saying that well, somebody got to go back to school. The brother got to get two jobs or go back to school, college, and get a degree to get a high-paying job. So you telling me, you telling us that to solve our financial issues of uh, of those who are married who are bickering, fighting over money. I'm I'm sorry. I disagree with that because our great great grandparents were poor, uneducated, and poor, and their marriages last longer. Our ancestors, our great great grandparents, were less educated and poor, and they had more children and more successful marriages. So you saying now the marital problems in the black community that's fight they are fighting over finances the brother is to what go to go get a job go 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 back to school and get a higher education so you saying to the saying to the brother to go back to school college and get a what student loan getting more debt to a bank who mostly owned by whites and the school is making money off of the loan Get more in debt. That's going to solve his marital problems related to finances. When the simple solution could be that black African American Muslims in your community, you guys need to start having businesses and doing business together. Not going back to school and going back to college to get another degree, an extra degree, another degree to get more in debt and more in student loans. How much don't college debts cost? $50,000, $60,000. The higher degree, the bigger the debt. The higher degree, the bigger the debt. That's the solution for the African American Muslim. Benign and neglect. The reason why we have the marital problems related to the finances, because blacks been locked out of wealth in America. Black Americans been locked out of wealth. This is the system of systemic racism. They blocked this out for certain type of industries. Historically. Historically. I'm not saying it just happened today. No, it happened before you was born. Most of us before we was born, these things already set in motions. So when you in your masters and you wonder why these black couples, their marriage is not working. Why there's no money. Why the people are fighting over money. Why this sister has five or six kids? That's a no, and that's a whole nother topic right there. Why this sister been married five or six times, have different kids by different fathers? Why are uh, everybody have the same social problems? Why people cannot donate for the masjid? Why the masters are in the ghettos in the hood? Why the masters are being rented and not owned because the masjid is not rented? It is owned. Why the masters are not owned? Systemic racism. Stop the brow beating the peoples. If you don't deal with the core issues, then you will never deal with the reality of the situation they are in. And many of you guys were happy, happy when they heard Sheikh Salim Tawil say, well, the answer to the problem is maybe Allah don't give you guys money because if you have money, if you have money, maybe it will misguide you. 
then we're going to ask somebody who is not from the U.S. How we deal with our social issues when that person don't probably don't even know our history, even though the question was given to him was general and he gave a general answer. Even though the question was general, he gave a general answer. But I know for sure them Guyanese was asking that because the Guyanese in that mass shit and the people there today, they own all the business in the, the houses and their homes in that area. I know the black brothers ask that question because they don't own nothing. They don't own no mass shit. Right here in Queens. In this old zone park area in Jamaica, Queens. I already know they don't own no mass shit. They can't even get their monies together to get it even an Islamic center because of what? That's a whole nother topic itself. So if we have the our du'at and our two lab elm who, who don't want to deal with social issues because they say dealing with black people's social issues, it means, oh, I'm a nationalist now. Who are you kidding? Stop. Who are you lying to? You're lying to yourself. Who are you kidding? Who are you trying to please? Did not the Prophet Sallallahu fought racism and dealt with racism? <laughs> the Hadith of Abu Dar? Did not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with racism? And classism? What about Zaid? A Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gave him position and he knew the Arabs wouldn't like him to have this position. They was they was upset with his position. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tried his best to break all these type of cultural barriers because it has no place in Islam. And he dealt with them. So you telling me as an African American imam in the Salafi community, you guys don't want to deal with these issues that's, that the mass majority of the people in your community are affected with. You don't see people in your community coming out of prison. You don't see people in your community got felonies. You don't see the sisters in your community married two or three times with multiple children by different men. And you keep on giving them the same fatwa, the same kalam from the same shit over and over and over. And it's, and it's not stopping these behaviors in the community. Because there is something that you are not recognizing where these issues come from psychologically. That's a psychological social behavior. And social behaviors or behaviors that are not warrant, warrant or misbehaviors, a lot of them are social issues that cause mental or psychological issues or conjunctive issues. Where, where do we think these things come from? And then if you want to look for the solutions and you're looking in Kitab and Sunnah for the solutions but you notice the way you guys are applying it is not working. <laughs> you're, you're, trying to you're trying to work it or use it. You're noticing it's not working in the community. So what happened is for some of you, not all of them, what you start doing, the sick from them, is that what you start doing is, instead of bringing the Quranic healing, the Quranic Islamic purification, what you start doing is using cult tactics. Man, this, these people won't get it, man. You keep on telling them, okay, let's try these tactics. If you don't do this, we're going to boycott you. If you don't do that, or you're not listening to us, and you and you and you're not dealing or listening to us, we're gonna do this to you. We're gonna say this about you. <laughs> That's what's happening in Philadelphia, Germantown, Masjid. If you don't do this or do that, we're gonna outcast you, or we're gonna make you feel a certain way or feel embarrassed. Then you're using these tactics, and you're not using these tactics to get the people to do good. You're using these tactics to get the people to blindly follow you to put money in your pocket. That's why Hassan Somali gave that two-hour talk in Germantown Mashed after the shooting. And I listened to it very well. All I heard for two hours, how to be a, a hardcore cult follower. 
when he said it out of his mouth. Oh, I heard his sister don't want to bring her kids back to the daycare because of the shooting. Oh, any brother. I don't want to misquote him. Any brother who don't have their gun license, I will pay for you out my pocket for you to get your gun license. I will pay out my pocket for you to get your gun license to what? Be the security at the masjid. Like that, like him being the security at the door going to prevent bullets from hitting, hitting or going inside the masjid. So basically what he was saying was, hey, I'll pay for you guys to get your gun license so you can secure our business, our daycare business, our Islamic business that we make money in this community that you could what? That you could secure it. And he said it out of his own mouth. Those who want to have a, 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 a group watch or a block watch to clean up the streets. Oh, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. You heard him. I heard him. Two hours he talked. Who wants to have go out there and clean up the streets? No, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. No, I just want you to guard our business in this masjid. Not clean up and deal with the issues in the street. Then he's beating up his community. Because they got the hooligans in the masjid. and part of the community. Hey, why you brothers are still hanging out with them guys in the street? You still on the drugs and on the corner with them and selling drugs with them and the gangs with them? Why are you still hanging out with them? Oh, man, this is real good cult talk. You got to make up your mind. Either you're going to be with them or be with us. But you're not noticing he didn't bring no solution to them brothers running the street. You need jobs. You need job training. I'll open a school, a technical school for you guys to get job training and skills so you don't have to be in the streets selling drugs or you don't have to be running the gangs. You can open up a school, trade school in the masjid area or the on the or on the block or in the facilities of the masjid so people could get job training or or skills and trades so they don't have to be out there and running the streets. You notice he ain't say nothing like that because he's only thinking about protecting his financial interest. Cults, tactics. Benign neglect. So when you have those in your community and they're the imams and the du'ats and they have this mind setting, that is only from one aspect. That's one aspect. Germantown, Masha, Hassan Somali, that's only one side of the coin. The other side is the other brothers who are not with them in the Salafi community, who's not with them or don't have his personality, they themselves don't have the knowledge to deal with the social issues because they are in neglect of it themselves. And some of them are in neglect about it because of self-hate. And I told you in the beginning of this video, I'm going to give some brothers the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they just don't know how to. They just study Islam, but they don't know how when it comes to social issues, they wasn't prepared for that. They're not prepared for that. And then some of them have the wrong interpretation when it comes about being black. Because they feel that if they talk about the black issues for the African American Muslim, then they are no different from the nation of Islam or war of Deen Muhammad. Islam, or for some of the Salafi community, Hisbiya, a Hisp, Salafi Hisp. Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Rabi all day. Salafi Hisp, Abu Khadija, Abu Khadija in the UK all day. Whoever's not with us is against us, right? And then when it comes to the social issues, the vast majority of the people living in, they don't even want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. I can tell you all the times I heard the followers of Salafi publication, followers in the U.S. talk about black issues. George Floyd, that's the only time I ever heard them talk about black issues. In the manner how George Floyd got killed, they said they disagree. But hey, they only said that because they didn't want the people in the community to go to the protests. Meaning that they're not for the people in the community to make change because if they didn't want the people to in the community to go to the protest for George Floyd because protests end in violence, then they should have had an alternative. And they didn't come with an alternative. If they was really for the social issues and the race issues in America and their community, then they would gave their peoples an alternative and they didn't. Salafi Post Files didn't give them alternative. Neither did Salafi Inc. give them alternative. 
They don't have an alternative. They don't have any alternative to what to do with the social issues in America. What's the alternative? If you don't want to do the protest, then what are the alternatives? They don't want to do it because it's work. And it's real work and you're not going to get paid for it. It's real work and you're not going to get paid for it. So they didn't give nobody in the community what are the alternatives. We don't do, we don't do um, protesting. I'm not for protesting either. I don't protesting get you nowhere. But they didn't bring to the peoples in the community what is the alternative to deal with systemic racism and police brutality against blacks. What is the alternative solution legally? How to legally in the government in this country to make change legally. These dudes are not for protesting. They're not for any legal change. And they're not to make any effort. But they benefiting from the efforts of the, those people who sacrificed and died in the civil rights movement. These Negroes are benefiting from them. But they don't want to participate in an alternative way to get a global change inside the u.s or national change inside of the u.s that will impact and change the black african-american muslims life so they gotta worry about when they go outside police are going to shoot them because they black because you were the jalabia you ain't you ain't exempt the white man see you you ain't exempt matter of fact when the white man see you and police see you they looking at you with a more of a bigger eye because you are practicing the religion to their mind of their oppressors and they i mean their opponents muslims arabs overseas they think you're with taliban or isis or daesh they think you're with al-qaeda they think that you ready, you gonna be the one who you know. They think they're not stupid. They think, oh, you gonna be the Muslim, Malcolm. You you are Malcolm X one on one or one or two of Malcolm X. Oh man, you might bring some real change. So they're gonna be watching you guys closely. But you guys, they ain't, you guys ain't no real no threat. I don't see you guys making any change in the African American Muslim community. You're not making any changes. And then you guys will say, well, we're busy calling people to a law and teaching people in Islam. You ain't calling nobody to a law. You're not teaching people in Islam. What you're doing is teaching people's, teaching people's fitna. 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 Hmm. All you're doing is teaching people fitna. Fitna. Sheikh Rabia and Sheikh so and so got beef. Oh, we with this. Oh, Salafi pubs, they're with this. Oh, they don't like this, Sheikh. You teaching the people's this. Now you guys got beef with each other in America. So you're not calling people to a law, you're calling people to personalities and fitna. And if you was really calling people to a law, and I give you props if you was doing this, if you guys were calling people to a law and calling people to Islam and calling people to real Salafia, which you're not, then where are the shuyuk you produce? Where are Hafiz in the Quran? Where are, your, where are all the students of knowledge that you're producing? You guys have now been in America now since the 80s. And you've been on the Sheikh Rabia tip since what? The early 2000s. Now I want to see from you do arts all the students of knowledge you guys build. If I go to Saudi Arabia and I go to Jamaat uh, to Islamia, I'm going to see the students that the university built. If I go to some institution or a group of peoples, I'm going to look at the students they built. If I go look at Sheikh Mukbil Rahim Allah, I'm going to see Sheikh Mukbil students. Yes or no? And I'm going to see his students are to level Elm. If I go to Sheikh Fauzan, I'm going to see his students are to level Elm and Uli Matt. Where are your shuyuk, your to level Elm in America? Where are your to level Elm? Where's the fruit of your guy's dawah? Where's the fruit of your dawah? But I'll give you the benefits of doubts. Where's the fruit of your dawa? I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Where's the fruit of your dawa now in America, in your communities? Where's the fruit of your dawa? Show me a Salafi mashit ran by African-American Muslims got a Quran school, a Hafiz school, and got at least in their mashit five children, five children that they taught to be Hafiz of Quran who didn't have to go overseas for it. I could go down the street from my house to a bunch of Bangladeshis here. 
hardcore handy fee followers who got at least 20, 30, 50 students who memorize Quran right here in America and the inside their schools. Show me a Salafi masjid ran by blacks in America, African America, who got at least 10 10 students that they made hafiz in America and they mash it. There's none. So where's where's the fruits of your dawah if you call them people to Allah? Where's the fruit of your dawah? Benign neglects. I'm going to give you the guys the benefit of the doubt. Benign neglects. You don't want to talk about black people's social issues. And if you're going to use for excuse, well, you're busy calling people to Allah. You've been doing this now for 20 years. Where's the results of your dawah? Where are the, the hufad of Quran? Where are the students who have memorized the Mutun and have Arabic language? Where are they? Nahat, where are your Arabic grammarians? Where are your Muhaddith or Muhaddithin? Where are they? Where are your Hafiz in Quran? Where are they? I don't see them in the communities. And then, can we really say you guys are calling to Allah or you calling to fads and trends and personality followers? Benign neglect. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. No one wants to talk about this. But if you turn around and you say, if some of you say, well, we're calling people to Allah, we're calling them, but they're not responding. If one or two of you guys say that, I'm, a, I'm with you. I agree with you. If one or two of you guys say, yes, but well, we're calling them, but they're not responding, I'm with you with that. The reason why they're not responding because they are affected by systemic racism that f affects them psychologically. And you can't fix these peoples, teach these peoples, build these institutions that you're trying to establish where people have psychological dysfunction socially. Psychological, dysfunctional, socially, meaning that the whole community have this issue. How going to memorize Quran when I can't pay my rent? I'm worrying about how to pay my rent. How I'm going to memorize Quran? How I'm going to put my kids in a Quran school if I don't have money to pay for the schools? How the sister is going to have good manners while she's still watching Empire. How the sister is going want to have good manners and she's still watching Housewives. How the sister is going to obey her husband and she's still a feminist. How the sister's going to be a good wife and she is a feminist and feminism or feminist agenda is an all shoot is one of the branches of white supremacy. Break up your home was intended to break up the home for the black folks. Get the woman highly educated, more educated than the man, then you're going to be an um, imbalance in the house. The woman is more educated than man is an imbalance in the house. And then that education that she's got in college, on top of it, own, own loans on top of it, is feminist education at its best, which is designed to destroy the home. So if you're going to say, well, you've been calling people to Islam and it's not working and it's not working, I've been trying and we're giving dawah and we're being patient and this is this is the results of it then you have to recognize that the psychological social issues in the african american community that is linked to systemic racism and trauma from slavery that is the main cause the main issue and once you deal with that and learn how to deal with that, then you're able to do some changes with them. But understand psychologically, how do a psychologist give therapy to somebody who have cognitive um, problems or cognitive behavior problems?
benign neglect. Either the benign neglect is intentionally in the African American Salafi community or it's unintentionally out of neglect and self hatred. Black people have a lot of self hatred. You notice know, in the African American Muslim community, especially in the Salafi community, I'm going to show you. You read Jalabiyah. This is Jalabiyah right here, right? You read Jalabiyah, right? Why you don't wear the Jalabiyah from Africa? <laughs> you know, even though my Jalabiyah here is from Africa, Sudani. Why you guys wear the Saudi and the Kuwaitis Jalabiyah? I'm going to show you how deep the self-hatred is for the black African-American Muslim Salafi community. It's so deep and it's so deep entrenched in our community. You won't wear the African Jalabiyah. You ever seen the African style Jalabiyah? They look very nice. I, I never catch any of the duats. African American duats wearing it. You're all wearing the Arab salt, the Arab Gulf or Yemeni Jalabiyah. You notice, you notice that. You gotta ask why. Why you guys don't wear African though? Why you guys don't have your own style of Islamic clothing from America? Or Jalabiyah made in America? Or made from your peoples that represents things that you like in your culture or reflect your culture. Why all the dresses are, are from Saudi, the Gulf? Someone say, well, we drive them back and forth. No, 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 no. It's not about because you're traveling back and forth or doing business or studying and you're living there and you adapt that. No, because you think that's a better lifestyle. You think it's better than what you already have. You think it's better than better than being African American clothing or making up your own clothes? Do the Indians wear a lot of jalabia? The Indian Muslims, right? They wear the kameez, and sometimes they wear jalabia, but they know from wearing what kameez. The Africans have their own style of clothing. Muslims own style of clothing and kameez and jalabia. The African American Muslim Salafi community all have to wear the Arab style of clothing. Why is that? Self-hate, inferior complex, inferiority complex. They gotta ask why the sister always have to wear black. Who said in the Sharia law that the hijab, kimar, jilbab, has to be black? There's nothing wrong with wearing black. Who said in the Sharia law it has to be black? Because you're following so deep. That's why. You're following the Arabs. That's why. And you can't even come up with your own dress code or your own style of clothing that fits within the Sharia law because your inferior complex self hate. You think you're not worthy. So that's why inside the Salafi community, the African American Salafi community, not all of them, that the Du'at and Tulaba Om do not want to talk about race issue because of what? Self hate. That's why the benign neglect. Some of it is intentionally and unintentionally. The unintentionally because the self-hate and you don't know it's there conjunctively. And you don't know it exists. And you might have a bachelor in Islamic not in Islamic knowledge. Might have a bachelor with your masters and you don't know it. We have things called educated fool, which I'm not saying you're a fool. Then I would say to those brothers that you recognize, yeah, I do recognize these things. These things exist in the community. How do I solve them? Then you need to start looking at, yo. Your history. So I'm telling you, especially the black African American Muslim, especially in the Salafi community, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that you guys are in denial about and don't want to know about, about black African American history and about the U.S. government, about race issues. And you're ignoring them and they are the root cause of a lot of problems inside your community. And every day you are browbeating them. Why this guy, why they can't get this ayat? This ayat is clear. You're like, what's wrong with this guy? This guy, is he monophic? That's what you say about the people in your community. Is the guy a monophic? I keep repeating the same ayat, telling them the same thing, giving them the proof, and they're still not accepting them because the person that you're talking to has psychological issues due to systemic racism. So it affects the way he thinks and affects the way he practices religion. But you, in the, you what? Benign neglect don't want to recognize that. 
And so you're brow beating the people in the community. Man, why does sister keep on getting married? Every time she get married, she's getting divorced. Because that sister might be suffering from psychological issues and have B BPD.